Hi guys, I hope you're doing well today. I'm a little tired, but I'm okay. I'm doing well. Other, other, other than that, um, today's sermon is called "Change the Picture." Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done, and I thank you for what you're about to do. And I thank you for the lives. You're going to change hearts. You're going to mend what you're going to do through this sermon. Go through the airwaves. Do what only you can do. Uh, Speak to me. Speak through me. Speak to each and every one of us. Something different all at the same time. Surprise us today, God, in our lives and in our circumstances. Before you change the situation, God, change us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Uh, So this sermon is called Change the Picture. I was thinking of this sermon because when I first got it, uh, like, I think it was a few days ago, I usually get the titles in sermons first. So when I first got this sermon title, I was like, but change the picture. And God said, it's basically just a change of perspective. He said, half the problems in your life, Rachel, is that you're you're looking at it through the lens of um, sadness and and um, horrible things. And he said, yes, horrible things do come. Sadness do come. And sadness does come. But he, he, he said to me, you need to change your perspective. Not ignore what's right in front of you, but embrace what's right in front of you, embrace the horribleness, embrace, yeah, this sucks, but at the same time, you need to understand that saying, yes, this sucks, but it will get better, and that will shift your perspective. And, like, some people say um, having a positive attitude all the time is unrealistic. Um, no, it's not. Um, having a positive attitude doesn't mean you ignore uh, the horribleness that is going on or you don't see the bad things that is going on. Having a positive attitude is saying things are are bad right now, but they will get better. They can get better. And actively, if you can, working for those things to get better. It's not saying, oh, uh, th- this, this will never change or or it's not seeing a thing that is bad and just staying there or just living in that space of negativity. Um, It's saying, yeah, things are bad, but they can change it. They can be changed, and um, because if you're it, there's there's a difference when you have a positive attitude and you want to avoid things, and there's a difference when you want to see things at the level that God does. 
people with the positive attitude with the purpose of avoidance just say, yeah, this will get better. And they, no, they say, this will get better without making changes or maybe denying the situation. They're like, let's have a positive attitude. And that's harmful too, because having a positive attitude is great, but if something needs to change in the circumstance, or if you need to change in the circumstance, that is something that you will need to embrace and take stock of. Because the only person you can change in a circumstance is yourself. And I think that, you know, having a positive attitude is great is great like i said it's necessary um but you also um need to have positive actions that go along with this uh, this um positive attitude you're having um i, I like to to watch uh, musical reactions and um, in a couple of weeks ago, I was watching, um, a musical reaction, uh, from the, from a channel called Reaction Therapy. He's an actual licensed therapist, uh, who does musical reactions. And he was doing reactions on Jelly Rolls, um, It's Not Okay. The song that Jelly Roll did, uh, um, It's Not Okay. And he had a bit of an um, interesting perspective. Um, uh, when Jelly Roll said, it's not okay, but it's all going to be all right. He says, and and the reactor said, yes, it's all going to be all right, but you have to work for it to be all right. He's like, it's not just going to be all right like that. You have to work for that. It's 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 all well and good to have a positive attitude, but sometimes positivity needs to be worked towards, needs to be acted upon. Um, like, it's a positive attitude negative, um, partnered with a positive reaction. So, so positive action. So, positive attitude partnered with a positive action is what I've learned to do, not to just have a positive attitude expecting things to change, but having a positive attitude and working towards them to change. Ex except when it's actually a miracle and a God thing for him to change it. Um, cause, cause some things in life only God can change. And some things in life, um, you have to, God partners with you to change it. Like, some things in life, God won't just change it like that. Some things he'll, he'll partner with you to change, and you just you just have to do change your perspective, and it's not easy to change your perspective. It is very difficult, and he'll he'll help you change your perspective if you ask him to, like because. 
some people say it's just a change of perspective. But when you've had a negative perspective your whole life, it is very hard uh, to change that perspective. And often perspectives start um, not with other people, not with the circumstance, but it starts with how you see, see yourself. Um, T.D. Jakes and Steve Furtick in one of their interviews was talk, were talking and, and he said, it's not, Bishop said to Pastor Furtick, he said, it's not that you're insecure about your sermon, you're insecure about yourself and giving the sermon. Um, because um, speaking from, uh, from my own experience, giving a sermon is very nerve-wracking, not because, um, not because uh, reading the Bible's hard, not because coming up with titles hard, coming up with scriptures hard, or whatever, but giving a sermon is very, very nerve-wracking because you are speaking on behalf of God and, and you and you just want to get it right. I know for me, every sermon I do, I just want to get it right. And I think um, and that's that's the thing. That's the thing uh, for me uh, with sermons is because I just want to get it get it right. Not because I'm anal, but but just because I I know I'm fallible, and the fact that God chose me. It's a huge honor and responsibility because I look at it as every time I turn on this camera, every time I expose God's truth, I look at it as, as um, God is speaking to me and it's a tremendous weight and responsibility that I carry. I look at it as people's lives are in my are in my hands. So I'm I'm extremely cognizant of that and it makes you and it makes me have a healthy fear of not saying anything wrong, making sure that I'm really hearing from the Lord, because I take this really seriously. Um, I don't, um, like, just pick out a scripture and try and find catchy terms or whatever. No, most of my sermons are things that I've lived and things that I've experienced and things that I've struggled through. And so, um, so I, I get that. So it's not your, it's not the, um, the, um, the, the technical part of the sermon you're worried about. Um, it's your, it's yourself as a preacher that you're worried about. You're like, how can I convey this? How can I, a mortal woman, convey this? And what I'm learning is to really, really, really just not say it. Really live it out. Really understand that it's God doing it through me. And to really make sure my ears are sharp to really make sure that I'm hearing the Lord and 
what he's saying and what he's trying to convey. Um, when, like, cause, um, I was, something came to me this week that I was talking to myself about. I said, um, they were talking, there were, there are controversial issues like swearing and, uh, no, cussing and smoking weed and drinking and all that. Should Christians be doing all that? Um, I'm not going to get into any of those issues specifically, um, but I was thinking about those issues and, like, um, I said to myself, well, it's not me that I'm worried about people having a bad opinion about. Me, me personally, I don't really care what people think about me. Not really. Uh, you can think what you want about me and it'll hurt for maybe a second or maybe a day and then I'll move on. But what I'm really concerned about is how people think about God. What do people think about God when they see me? Knowing that I'm a believer, knowing that I'm um, a daughter of the king, do I convey that? Do I treat people the way that God would have me treat people? Um, do I reflect him in a way that he would say, I'm proud of you, daughter, for for doing that. That's what I care about. So I care about what people think about him when they see me. Do they see love? Do they see light? Do they see grace? Do they see light? Do they see all those things? Rather than don't, don't smoke, don't drink, don't do all those things. And... Like, I think that is the most important thing. Um, to just be like Christ. Because you can not smoke, not drink, not cuss, not do anything, but be the most awful, horrible human being ever. Um, and that is as as bad or worse than somebody smokes and drinks and swears. Um, so that's a different perspective that I've, I've gathered. And, and sometimes what you're in now, and anything you are facing, what I've learned in my own life is to ask God for his perspective on whatever issue you're facing. So I'm having an issue with a family member, and now I'm asking God how to look at that issue with that person how to respond to that person now. Or when I'm having an issue uh, with writing, I'm like, Lord, give me your perspective on these characters, even if they're not Christian characters, because he gave me the story for a reason. I'm like, God, don't you want me to write only Christian fiction or whatever? No, no, he's like, I've called you, he's like, I've called you to do both, because um, you have a unique perspective to do both. And if the secular, sexy stuff draws them in to read your brother Christian stuff, and that Christian stuff draws them to me, that's what I want. So... Though sometimes I'm using your secular stuff 
to draw them into me because they'll un they'll want to know your other stuff and then they'll bump into your Christian stuff and then they'll they'll meet me. The Lord told me something years ago. He said he said to me, um Use what they know to teach them what they don't. He said, if if they like to t talk about, if they like sex talk, okay, use that in a kingdom manner. You know, you know, if they like to talk about love and romance, use that in a kingdom manner. If they like manner. Um, if they like to talk about murder, use that in a kingdom manner. And I'm like, okay, okay. So it's it's a bit of a different perspective. Um, the Lord says he needs somebody out there to ask for his perspective on their situation. Because the issue with us is we see things through our own lens when we need to see things through his lens. And people say, change your perspective, change your perspective. But the truth is you can't change your perspective by yourself. You need his help, you need his wisdom, you need his guidance. And He's just wanting so much so to give that perspective, to give that to you. And he's longing to do that because I think that when we get God's perspective on people, then we'll, we'll know better how to move and how to think and how to have our being. And I think we're we're so mired in our perspective and we're so mired in what we think. We don't understand that for everything we are facing right now, God has this per perspective. And his perspective on our situation is higher than we can ever think. And if we ask for that perspective, he'll give it to us. He's just longing to give it to us if we if we understand it. I think um, the start of asking for his perspective is on our situation is to ask for his perspective on who we are. Because what I struggled with is like, oh yeah, I've heard that Jesus loves me. I've heard that all this, I've read all the scriptures and whatever. But I had to say, God, you have to show Rachel that you love Rachel. It's not just I, I read it in the Bible, show me that you love me and give me a different perspective on myself. Because I think our perspective about the world often, most of the time starts with our perspective on ourselves. So all those judgy people that you think are just judging you, whatever, that's because they have a poor perspective on themselves. They have a poor perspective on themselves. So a, a change of perspective of your situation um, often starts with a change of perspective on yourself. And then it flows down to your situation, to other people. And then you can ask them, ask God for a change in perspective on others. But you, 
but you need to start with a change in perspective on yourself. Start seeing yourself the way God sees you. And don't just quote scriptures, because I did that before. I'm a royal priesthood, a holy nation, blah, 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 blah. And, and it, it worked for a time, but I needed a perspective for my work with his words to me. Not, not just that Paul wrote or, or somebody else wrote to the nations. So, and he gave me, and he gave me this, he said, you're a voice to a generation. That's the perspective he gave me on myself. Um, and he wants to give that to each and every one of you. He wants to give you his own perspective on you. Like, just not something he wrote for someone else and that you could glean from that one thing but he wants to give you a perspective on yourself that is different from everyone else because the often your perspective about the world comes back to your perspective on yourself so in order to change your perspective on yourself, in order to change the picture about about um, the world, you need to change the picture about your on yourself. Because sometimes you try to change the world, and you don't change yourself first. It doesn't work like that. You've got to start with you. Michael Jackson had it great, great there when he says, if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. So in order to change your perspective on your situation, in order to change the picture, you need to change your perspective on yourself. And how do you change your perspective on yourself. Ask God for his perception of you. Because God has a specific perception of you that he wants you to embrace. That is totally unique and special to you. He has, he has words about you that only you will understand about you and cling to. The perspective, the perspective of you in the Bible is a good place to start. I started there, but as I said with me, I needed words for just Rachel that he didn't write for anyone else. And he gave those words to me. And he's given that perspective to me on every area that I've asked him for. Even this situation with this family member, he's given me the, a different perspective. And he continues to give me a different perspective every day. So in order to change your perspective about your situation, you need to first change your perspective about yourself. Because any perspective about yourself you have will bleed into, that, into your situation. Because your situation is just a series of events or whatever, circumstances. But the key is how you're looking in it. And the key is to look at your situation differently. You need to look at yourself differently 
and you need to look at God differently. What does that need, mean for you? You need to get God's perspective and getting God's perspective will change your self perspective. And, and when you change your self perspective, you will change your situational perspective. And the circumstances uh, maybe won't change, or maybe they will, but regardless if they do or if they don't, uh, your perspective will become much better and it won't affect you as negatively as it is now. Um, the Lord is calling for a change of perspective on yourself. The Lord said to me a few days ago, this message is called change the picture. And in order to change the pictures, you need to change the perspective on yourself. And the perspective on yourself will change the situation. And the situa and the situation will in, in turn um, uh, cause you to move through the situation more easily. Get God's perspective on every situation you are facing in your life. Get God's perspective. Ask the Lord, not how do I get out of this situation? Um, ask the Lord, Lord, what is your perspective on the situation? Number two, what tools do I need to manage this situation? And what has this situation come to teach me? And though, in my experience, those questions will unlock something in you which you won't be able to contain. He wants to give you his perspective, but he wants you to ask for it first. He wants you to commune with him and ask for, for his perspective on your situation. He wants you to to surrender your need to know. He wants you to surrender yourself and ask for his perspective on yourself and on your situation. And, e and even, even deeper, you could, after you ask him about his perspective on you and your situation, you could even ask him about your perspective on you and your perspective on your situation. Because oftentimes, because he knows you better than anyone, better than your husband, better than your wife, better than anyone. So he can tell you your perspective and why you feel that way and start bringing up issues and start um, healing you and restoring you and changing your perspective and changing your outlook and changing you who you are from the inside out. He's just longing to do that. He's just wanting to do that. He loves to do that. And he will give you insight on yourself that will surprise you. And he'll do it in the most loving way. 
He'll do it in the most gentle way, and you won't even realize that he's doing it because he'll be so loving and so gentle. God's a righteous judge, but he won't beat you over the head. His judgments will be kind and will be loving and will be for your good. And he'll just, he has the calmest bedside manner ever. And he'll give you what you need when you need it. So if you need a swift kick in the pants, he'll give it to you. If you need a gentle hand of love and a hug, he'll give it to you. I know this because I've, I've been through this myself. And I would feel rejuvenated. The Lord, I want to talk for for my last few minutes about stillness. About how important it is to be still. And the way you get a different perspective on yourself and on your situation is to to get still and to get really st- still because stillness creates space for God to move and work inside of you. When your mind is busy and when your life is busy and complicated and overcrowded, the Lord doesn't have room to work because you're always going and going and going and going. If you want God to heal you and and restore you and to give you a different perspective on yourself and the situation, you need to get still. Stillness is the start of your new beginning because a lot of people use busyness and social media and different engagements and different things to run from what what they're really facing to run from their problems and to not do the not do the god work and the self work that they need to participate in. God work, the God work is um, the work that God is trying to do in you. The self work is the work that you and God are partnering on together to do in yourself. Because you can't work on yourself. You can be a partner with God to to bring about um, the work He's doing in you. And sometimes He'll just do work in in, in you. But he won't do a work in you without your permission and without your surrender and without your partnership. He won't force you to do a work in you. He wants you to be a willing participant in your life. A lot of people say, I'm just waiting on God. I'm just waiting on God. Well, God's waiting on you. God's waiting to partner with you and give you this wonderful life that you're seeing, that you're dreaming, that you're hoping for. But you need to get skill. You No, you need to get still. Because stillness breeds instruction. There's a power in stillness. 
Because when you're still with God, um, even for about five or ten minutes a day, it doesn't have to be long. It gives you such strength and such power and allows him to whisper the, that those words of affirmation. Um, people say that they want affirmation, but the first person you need to receive affirmation from before social media, before your friends, before your family, before your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, and wife, you need to receive that affirmation from God. And he will give you a word that's just for you. A rainbow word, a right now word about who you are. He will give you a phrase about who he thinks you are that he that he just tailor made for you. At least in my experience, that's what happened to me. When I said I need I need a word from you, I don't need to to adopt at this moment. There there are times to take uh, the scriptures and adopt them for yourself, but there are times, at least in my life, when, when I I need a word from me that you've never said to anyone else in history. I need that affirmation from you. And he's given it to me. He's given given me. I'm so, I'm so proud of you, girl. I love how you did that. And he said that to me. Just that way. Like, it was a phrase, ter- tailor made for me. He's like, I'm with you, girl. You can do this. And you'll, you'll say, are you sure God talks like that? Yes, he does. He talks, like, in a way that you could understand stand him. But that takes stillness and relationship. And a relationship with God, it's the easiest thing to get into, but not the easiest thing to live out. It's hard, it's tough, but it will it's the best thing ever because you will not be alone. And all you need for a relationship with God is to tell tell him where you are, what you need. He knows where you are and what you need, but he wants to be invited in. He, wa- he wants to hear you say, God, I need you. And you don't need to to do any special words. He just needs to hear you and where you are. And even if you're not sure about it, you can say, Lord, I'm really not sure. But something that lady said or something Rachel said really got to me. So come in and show me who you are. So... Because he'll start where you are and bring you to where he wants you to be. If you just ask him. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you. It is so awesome to be with you today. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.
change your per- perspective and it will change your life. But first, before you change your perspective on your s- situation, you need to change your perspective on yourself. And to do that, you need to change your perspective on God. And how do you do all those things? How do you change your perspective on God, yourself, and the situation? Ask God for his perspective. Because God has a divine perspective that he's just waiting to share for you, all, with you. And all he wants you to do right now is ask. Ask and you shall receive. You shall receive power. You shall receive revelation. You shall receive peace. Just ask right for God's perspective. Ask for his mind, his heart, his spirit. And he will fill you up with new revelation, new new understanding of things to come. God bless you.